Hi, I'm the Morelander and this is Morelander Tactical. Now today we're going to talk about something a wee bit different, but these are things that I use a lot. So on my sister channel, Morelander EDC, um, I have already made some content on these, which I'll leave a link to whichever side that it's on, so that you can watch that. But they're more kind of your EDC, everyday kind of things. This is Moreland are tactical. So what we're going to do today is we're going to have a look at Ranger Bands and why Ranger Bands are so useful. I genuinely carry these everywhere with me. I have these in the little kind of things so we'll have a look at what they are, where you get them and what you can do with them. Um, but I, I really do use these for so many different things. In fact, I, as I was setting my camera and tripod up, I was smirking to myself because I can see three Ranger Bands hanging off my camera and my tripod and stuff here because of how useful they are and the different things that you can use them for. Um, so yeah, that's what we'll have a look at today. They, they really are incredibly useful. Um, so yeah, there you go. Normally I'd say thank you to somebody for sending them to me, but... You'll see how easy these are to get. Uh, yes, so for now, let's turn the camera around and take a closer look so that we can see exactly how useful these range bands really are. So, what is a range band? Now, a range band, for all intents and purposes, it's just a rubber band, it's just an elastic band on steroids. And that, I mean, essentially that's what it is, but they can be used, they really can be used for so much more. Um, now, where do they come from? So they're named Ranger Bands after the uh, the, the US um, section of the military, the US Rangers. Um, however, from talking to a few different people, uh, either through the channel or friends and acquaintances that I've met, I know that these have been adopted by lots of different military forces all around the world. I have friends that have been in the in the, in the German army, the British army, and they, they all use these. I think they're called Ranger Bands mainly because um, they they came kind of to popularity through uh, through the US forces and that, that's kind of where the name has stuck with. Um, but yeah, so essentially they are um, a an elastic band on steroids and when you look at it at this top way you probably think well that doesn't look like an elastic band so this is the way that I keep I carry I store my range bands but it will make hopefully make a lot more sense when I bring these in and you'll be able to see exactly what they are so if you don't know what these are well I'm sure probably everybody does but these are bike inner tubes um, you can either buy them, I mean, if you want, you could go to any sort of bike store, pick these up for four or five pounds, four or five dollars, four or five euros, you know, they're not particularly expensive. Um, and then what you then do is, with a pair of scissors, which I always tend to find that I carry some scissors with me, so you can cut them off, and then you cut them to size. So I've actually got two sizes of um, inner tubes here. So you have the large kind of mountain bike uh, style inner tubes. I, I always forget the measurements, but you know, these are these are the larger, wider ones. And then these are the more for the, the, the street bike, the, um, the, the racing style bikes. It's always good to have the two different versions, mainly because these will fit over something that is wider. And then the, the smaller ones tend just to be a little bit tighter as well. You'll always get this I think it's kind of a silicony powder on the inside. Don't try and snort it. It's not very good for you. I tried it. No, I didn't. Of course, I didn't try it. No. Um, but anyway, so yeah, you'll you'll get this, but it'll, it'll all just kind of come off after a while. Little tip: don't buy these. Um, I mean, it's great if you've already bought one and your tire gets flat. Then yeah, of course you can reuse it. Um, but go to any bike store wherever you are in the world and go. Hey, um, I'm just on the scrounge. I don't suppose you've got any inner tubes that you will normally have thrown away that are in the tr in, in your bin at the moment. And they go, yeah, yeah we got this one, this one. Do you want to, do you want to take them? And you know you can just make these for free. Um, I have seen people selling them online. You can get like a pack of twenty. Um, different sized 
Ranger bands for like ten dollars, and wow, somebody's making a somebody's making a tidy bit of money. So that, that I mean, that's essentially what they are. I mean, you you can get there, you can get these, you can make them any size, or well, at least you can make them as thin or as wide as you want to. What I tend to do is, and is what you'll see here. So rather than having lots of smaller, looser ones around in my pack or in my gear, um, I'll make these sleeves. So what I can do is I can pull these out and inside there, there's probably about four or five of them. Um, so then depending on what I need it for, I can just cut a bit off when it's, when it's finished with. I can then slide it back inside, which of course I'm trying to do on camera now, which is a pain in the ass when you're trying to do anything. And I think we've just gone out of focus as well, but let's do this first so I can oh buggery you know you know what I'm you know what I'm doing you slide that in there and then yeah so you get all of these let's get back into focus so what I'll do is I'll have some of these thin ones and I'll have some of the wider ones and then yeah so you, you need to you need to do something you take one out you cut it you put it you, you put your scissors back you put whatever back and you're good to go and that essentially is what a ranger band is and how you make them and, and where you get them from but really it's it's the uses of these so a cracking example would be um, magazines there are plenty of solutions out there to help you to grip these, um, especially these uh, metal um, magazines. They do get quite slippy because there's, there's no sort of ridges on here. I know the newer polymer PMAG style ones specifically have the ridges on there so that they are easier to grip. But if you like something that's a little bit more robust or you just want to stay with the, uh, with the metal ones, even your 9mm magazines, your 9mm stick mags, these sort of things, they do have that kind of nub on the end so if it's in your pack and you want to be able to pull these out you can do um, but sometimes it's just nice to be able to have something that will give you a little bit more grip and that's what we do so you just simply cut off cut off um, a bit now I just did this quickly to get these on because I have been testing out uh, some new magazines recently um, and these new ones are great by the way um, and yeah you just put it on and then w when you're doing this when you're trying to get these in and out of your carrier or your chest rig being able to grab hold of that really it, it just isn't going to come off I probably would have made these a little bit wider though at the moment they're probably about 25 millimeters I would have probably made them about maybe 35 to 40 millimeters that just makes sure you've got plenty of grip to be able to rip these out put in your new fresh mag uh, and be able to uh, to go so the, the grip thing with this is, it, 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 again, it's just something that's really useful to get things that certainly sometimes you may struggle with if you're, if, if when you're wearing gloves. So here is, um, here's a Phoenix flashlight. With this one, I used one of the smaller ones. When I put them onto my magazines, I used the larger, wider ones. Uh, but with this one, I've used one of these smaller ones, put it onto the shaft of the, um, of the flashlight there. It just gives you such better grip Grip. Now I know a lot of flashlights they all have this knurling on there which is great when you when it's in your hands but or at least in your bare hands but when you're using gloves they can be a little bit slippy when they're cold as well or your hands are wet just putting that on there you know you, you get it where you need to get it and it, it, it just gives you that extra grip should you need it. There's plenty of things around grip that you can use these for so here um, here is a, a, a buckle for a sling. Um, what I've done with this one is I've added one here on the end. So whenever, you, I mean, you probably all know when, when you push these in, sometimes they can be quite loud, they can be quite noisy, but when if you put um, your range band over the plastic buckle there, it still allows it to be pushed in. The strength of the Ranger band isn't strong enough to be able to pinch that so that it will it will it will fall out. But what it does mean is that should you need to, should you be able to grip this, um, it's it's just a whole lot easier. If I'd have made this one an extra maybe inch longer, then I could get it over here as well. So sometimes you'll find some of your buckles when they're banging against things, especially if this is banging against your rifle, it does make quite a bit of noise. So having this extra range band over there will help to reduce and dampen down a lot of that noise. 
Um, on the flip side, or at least on the opposite end of this buckle, so this is a Tasmanian Tiger one, and they, they put a lot of detail into theirs. So where you have your flat hook or your, uh, your flat um, buckle, Damn, what's it called? Anyway, your flatty thing. Um, they they have these uh, they have these elastics that slide over. So when it's attached to your rifle, you get a lot less of that jangling noise. But let's pretend this wasn't here, and you just got one that had one of these buckles on the end. Yet again, if you cut yourself a little bit of a length of this, I'm just going to push that through, give it a bit of a pinch, and then pull it over. Now one of the advantages with using this method is, so these, because it's just a piece of um, a piece of elastic, sorry we've just gone out of focus there again haven't we, I've been looking at my hand and not the screen, um, these will slide forwards and backwards quite freely, whereas when you put over uh, one of these, one of the slimmer um, range bands, they, they, don't, they don't slide forward so you can then pull that back, hook it over whatever you need to, put it back on again, and then, you know, you're off, you, you, you're out and running. If you wanted to go that extra little bit further, then you can put both of these over there as well. What that does is, is gives you the same match of the color. It gives you a little bit more protection when this is um, banging against your rifle, it's banging against your kit. Um, it will help to reduce the noise a hell of a lot more. And plus, because you now have this rubber sleeve on the inside there, what you had before where is this might run forwards and backwards reasonably easy, all of that is took away because it's, it's all just there for you to be able to do that. These are also really useful, especially the smaller ones um, where you've got um, extra webbing on things. So I'd, again, I know with Tasmanian Tiger you always get a little bit of elastic or you get a little bit of Velcro that you can wrap around your excess webbing so that it, it's just not in the way. Um, if you haven't got those and you just want to make yourselves some of these, you can roll it up pull that over it more like a little sleeve and again it will just stop all of that kind of movement in excess webbing um, that you just don't want flailing around all over the place extra little bits so of course if you have maybe a favorite knife uh, that you're doing uh, uh, camp duties whatever it is that you're doing with this these are great but keeping something like a ferrocinium rod with these I mean it's not particularly difficult if you if you kind of look after your gear but if you don't you can have one of the thick ones which I've just noticed that don't have one cut so here let's just cut another one so there we go cut that off Get this back in focus, Robert's your mother's brother, put that on there, slide it up, obviously it takes a little bit of a wiggling to get it on there, and then if you want to slide in a ferro rod, you can always make sure that your ferro rod is with your knife and it will make sure that it keeps that in there as well. A couple of other things, especially uh, if you're wanting to keep things protected, so uh, this this example here, I was just trying to find something quite quickly, but this is a deck of slim cards. Uh, but this is mainly to illustrate the point that you know when you're taking certain things, maybe you've got a, a, a repair kit or something that is in a small um, cardboard box. These boxes they just deteriorate really quickly. Um, so cut yourself a piece, have it all the way down the end and then all of your corners are protected. You can get in and out, you can do whatever you need and then you can put it away um, should you need to again. And it's, it's all about kind of putting your stuff in and in, in, in and out of uh, in and out of your kit. What I'll also do as well is for certain items, you know, I, have, I do find sometimes um, that certain tools, when they are in my kit, um, rattle around quite a lot and, you know, th there's a tendency for them to fall out, especially things like multi-tools. So what I do with a multi-tool is, I'll again make one of these uh, little sheaths, put the multi-tool in it, just so that it just pinches it just that extra little bit, drop it into a mag pouch and again, you know, because it's coated or it has that rubber sheath all around it, it stops it from moving around as much and it, it's just a little bit easier. Now when we're talking about our weapons as well, when you're thinking about uh, extra grip, 
people put your, the likes of your goon tape on here as well so that with, with your gloves um, you know it, it just stops your hand sliding around but again you can take one of those now if you don't like swearing around your wife and children or your husband and children then go into another room when you do it but you can pull one of these over there and it gives you the perfect grip if you have finger serrations on your uh, grip as well it will mold itself around those I know we talked about um, wobbly or noisy uh, fixtures but you can do exactly the same with these so if you have uh, a sheath and put it over here so that it goes over both of these two buckles let's just turn that around so it goes over these buckles that will again help to reduce a lot of noise the great thing with these as well is because they're also rubber, they're not shiny. They don't reflect light at all. If somebody is shining a light towards you, it will just dampen that light. It's a shame that you can't get these in many different colors, but at the end of the day, it's it's a bike in a tube and it's, it's not really designed to be on the outside. Having a few of these up here at the front are great on a Riz rail, mainly because there's just so many different things that you can attach to these. Now, again, I just quickly put this on here um, but if you had maybe um, a remote button for a light rather than having it here on the side or here at the top um, what you can do is you can put it there it just gives it just enough room to slide in there and it also gives it just enough friction so that when it is in there and your thumbs right on it or maybe on the opposite side if you do some kind of strange reach around kind of thing um, but it puts it in just the right position for your thumb so that it's in between these two picatinny rails really good for this kind of thing and again maybe if you have your foregrip and you just want to give it some extra protection you're banging this a lot whatever you're doing with this or you just want that extra grip so that your hands get in there and they're, they're not sliding off again it's just a, a really good example again of what you can use a ranger band for so there you go i mean ridiculously simple but ridiculously useful here just on my rifle as it stands now having shown you these there's probably about 20 or maybe not 20 maybe a dozen different uses that you can use these for having these little rolls in your kit bag in your plate carrier in your chest rig wherever you want to keep them just having a few of these cutting them up doing what you need to do with them if they break who cares because you've got a thousand more of them and you can you can keep making them and they're, they're just yeah unbelievably useful plus i mean they're free you just kind of in the day and age that we live in oh let's save the whales oh what about this doesn't that hurt, hurt the dolphins nope because we're reusing it apart from the trees that they probably cut down to make these but anyway um yes it's reusing it's upscaling it's whatever the lefties call it and yeah so there you go so i hope you enjoyed today's content as well um, i know somebody who may specifically be watching this and i just want to say ranger bands of course rangers lead the way um but yes for now stay safe stay more lender and stay tactical Invented them. Uh, I have some friends that have been in the army um, quite some time, you know, uh, way, way back um, here in the UK. Um, now, let's start again. Got a lot of, a lot of Tweety Birds around today. Lots of Tweety Birds. It's cold today as well. Temperature's dropped. Where were we? <clears throat> Shoot! Hi, I'm the Moorlander and this is Moorlander Tactical.